some of the legal expertise we have in the Attorney General's office to help people who may find themselves unexpectedly in a guardianship situation or who may be considering becoming a guardian for someone who needs help. Today we are proud to unveil the Ohio Guardianship Guide, which I have somewhere in that's the judge can love me his. This is the guardian, uh, this is the rule, rule book, I guess, what I call it. Now. The Ohio Guardianship Guide that our office has, has prepared, and we do have a number of them in, in back. Uh, the guide was prepared by our office, uh, but we certainly received a, a great deal of input from the Disability Rights Ohio group, the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities, the Ohio Department of Aging, and certainly Representative Landa, who is a lawyer and guardian herself, uh, Trumbull County Probate Judge Thomas Swift, uh, Julie Knack of the Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging. So we thank them for their help. Well, the guide doesn't cover every possible facet of a guardianship. It will provide prospective guardians with a baseline of essential information they'll need to serve their wards effectively and responsibly. And we hope we have written this in uh, non-legal terminology and that the average person uh, who might be a guardian uh, would have the ability to read it. Uh, we believe we have. The guide spells out the basics of guardianship, including the role of the probate court, who may need a guardian, and the functions, the functions of a guardian. The guide also describes several typical scenarios in which guardians operate. There's helpful information throughout the guide, including a glossary of terms and a list of additional resources. Copies of the guardianship guide have been mailed to probate courts across the state of Ohio as well as to advocacy groups such as the Ohio Area Agencies on Aging and Disability Rights Ohio. The guide can also be downloaded from the Ohio Attorney General's website, which is ohioattorneygeneral.gov. That's ohioattorneygeneral.gov, and anyone can download that. As I mentioned, we intend to work with the courts and the Ohio legislature to move towards consistency and accountability and to improve the guardianship system in our state. I'm pleased that Representative Melanda and Senator Jones will introduce companion bills, House Bill 624 and Senate Bill Number 365, have joined me today and will talk about their proposed legislation. I turn it over to one of the representatives. <laughs> Good morning. House Bill 624 and the guardianship guide is meant to encourage best practices and to raise awareness of the unique issues presented in caring for our young people and our elderly who find themselves subject to a guardianship process. I was inspired to thoroughly examine Ohio's laws in this area after an in-depth news story revealed horrific instances of financial and even physical abuse of some wards in Ohio. While my own personal experience as a guardian has been far removed from these examples, current law is clearly lacking when it comes to specific guidelines regarding a ward's rights within a guardianship and what a guardian is expected to do to protect the ward's financial and physical security. A guardianship should not be a means to treat the individual as a lesser human being simply because of the disability that dictates the necessity. This bill is designed to increase accountability, increase uniformity of practice and procedure among guardians across the state, and prevent lapses of judgment, even abuse, by guardians who may claim that they simply didn't know any better. Once the standards imposed by this legislation are in place, protection of the board and removal of the guardian, if warranted under the circumstances, may be better assured. I want to thank Attorney General Mike DeWine and his staff the Ohio Judicial Conference, and many other experts and interested persons who devoted their time and energies into the creation of this much-needed legislation and manual. At this time, I would be happy after Senator Jones gives her remarks to answer any questions. Thank you very much for being here today. I really just want to add, uh, from the Senate's perspective, uh, first, my personal thank you to the Attorney General for his leadership on this issue. Like Representative Kalanda, 
Um, I too was horrified at reading the series that appeared in the Columbus Dispatch. And um, I'm grateful for the leadership that, that Mike DeWine has shown. Um, that same day, I picked up the phone and called him and answered it right away and um, had already been working with his staff internally to try to start to address the issue. So I'm um, not surprised by that given his tremendous leadership on things like elder abuse and reforms in the foster care system, uh, but it was uh, reassuring to me to know that uh, our Attorney General was uh, already on this. Um, secondly, I'd like to thank Representative Kalanda. As you all know, um, we are not um, jacks of all trades in the legislature. Um, some might say we're masters of none. Uh, but I like to think of it as that each member brings their own subject matter expertise to this, um, to this body, and I'm grateful for her leadership on these issues. She's been a wonderful partner and um, have learned a lot from her and the experience and expertise that she brings to the debate. The final thing that I would say, I, I would end on, on a little bit of process, to, to say that uh, my role, uh, in addition to my co-sponsors, which are uh, Senator Lehner and Senator Seitz, probably some of the three most vocal members of the Ohio Senate, to assure the Attorney General and Representative Kalanda that we, the three of us, will do everything in our power in the Senate to get this passed in a very short, lame duck session uh, so we can move this very good bill forward. So um, thank you for being here, and uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions.